Hey, what's going on everyone? Another video, Catch Not Fish. Today, I am so happy. I caught sheep's head. Check it out. So if anyone knows about sheep's head, they are very, very, very good. And one of the reasons why I believe they're good because their diet normally uh, consists of crustaceans. So sheep's head eats shrimp, fiddler crabs, barnacles, clams, and such. So their meat is, is marinated with all the other good seafood out there in the waters. This is why they're so good. So I did not get any actual footage of us fishing today for the sheep's head, but I will include a picture of the area that we covered. Plus, I'm going to describe to you the sheep's head bite that I feel describes what you're looking for when you're trying to catch sheep's head. Now, there are a number of videos out there talking about sheep's head and the bite and their, their diet. In my opinion, the bite that a sheep head give you it's gonna be compared to if you have a rubber band stretched out and you take and pluck that rubber band, you pluck it. So imagine if you're holding your rod and reel, you always wanna have your rod tip down at a downward angle because if you have your rod tip up, you're gonna miss the bite, slacking in line, you're gonna miss the bite. When you feel the bite, if you dip the rod to set the hook, they're gonna drop that bait out of their mouth. You're gonna miss it. So that's why, based on my research, based on my fishing for sheep's head, you wanna have your rod tip down at an angle with your, with your line stretched so you can detect that bite. And when they bite, in my opinion, give you the honest answer to how it feels, is if you take a rubber band, and if you can imagine how it would feel if you kind of lightly, lightly plug that rubber band. Maybe even like a guitar string. So that's how a sheep's head bite to me. Now, there are some examples where I have been fishing and I actually felt the bite where it's like, doop, doop, you feel it. But for the most part, when you're fishing for sheep's head, you cast out. Once your bait hits the bottom, you have to be prepared for the, to detect the bite because it'd be something as simple as, you're like, do I have a bite? You reel up quickly and you see that they're gone. They, they suck the meat out of the fill of crab if you're fishing with fill of crab so fast. And fill of crab is my number one bait. And I and I know there are so many Facebook pages, there are so many YouTube videos, there are so many articles. So honestly, to each their own. What works for me may not work for you. What works for me may not work in a different part of the country. What works for you. So to each their own. A lot of times if you you come around others or you talk and, and it, sometimes it just can go south. And that's why you gather as much information that you can and you kind of pull what works for you. And you that's what makes you a better angler. So when you go out and about, you know exactly what tackle you need, you know what presentation you're gonna be using. There's so much out there. Normally, I use a Carolina rig. I love the Carolina rig because to me, it's versatile. So I can use a Carolina rig fishing and say like I'm not doing too hot, I can reel it up quick, I can throw up a lot of shrimp or a dead shrimp out and just cast out fish on the bottom for a while. So, the vid, 
I'm sorry, the picture that I put in this video, I'm gonna show you the area of water that we fished. So we went fishing today. There was a group of us on the, the boat and we caught a number of sheep's head. We caught a number of sheep's head that we threw back. I lost a couple at the boat. Others lost couples at the boat. So what we put in the boat was a fraction of the action that we had. But based on what tackle you're using, the line, the hooks, the rod and reel. For example, the, the gentleman's boat that I was on, he cast out, he got the bike, he's like, he missed, he's like, I got the wrong rod. He's like, I got the wrong rod. He put the rod down, he grabbed the rod that he normally uses for the sheep's head bike, the very next, not really cast, because normally you want to just drop down if you can get to where they are uh, located, you just want to drop down. I have never had success or experience casting out and fishing with sheep's head. Normally when you fish with sheep's head, in my experience, you want to be situated where you can kind of just drop directly down from the boat. You want to drop down over the oyster bed. You want to drop down next to the paddle. You want to drop down next to the seawall so you can keep your rod angle down. You can keep the line tight. In all honesty, you can close your eyes and think about what I said. It feels like a rubber band that stretch. And imagine if you just, it's something as simple as this. You're like, did I have a bite? And you reel it up, like, I did, like, look at this, man. That's why they call them convicts, because they're the masters, the kings of stealing bait. I mean, it's, it's, it's amazing how much bait you will go through losing, uh, or will lose targeting sheep's head. But if you can get on the sheep's head bite, it's amazing because these fish, they pull hard and they are delicious. And they are one of my number one fish that I enjoy catching. We think better, baby, the uh, sheep's head or the mangrove snapper. And they're both pretty good. I think the sheep head is though. Yeah. I think I'd take the cake. But that's one good thing about uh, the catch and cook videos because it doesn't matter what you catch to a certain degree if you prepare it correctly or a certain way. If you um, bleed the fish and then what seasoning you use and how you cook it, if you saute it or if you fry it. So sometimes fish is good uh, depending on how you cook it. So like I said, very exciting. I had an awesome time. I hope in this video I covered just some helpful tips that will help you have success on the water while targeting sheep's head. But I will admit we were not specifically targeting sheep's head. We were fishing to catch fish. And as I try to evolve as a better angler, that is one thing I am pulling from my trips, my experiences of being around other seasoned anglers, catching fish, being successful, when you're going out on the water, it's not going to one spot and casting out and just spending the entire day there. And I stated this in previous videos, it is kind of, it's like a grind. So all in all, that is something that I'm getting used to it's the grind. It's like you're working to put fish in the boat. If, if you have a boat, if you're from a shore, you work in the shoreline, then you're, it's a grind. And I, I'm honestly not used to that grind. So that's why you have to be versatile. And in previous videos, I spoke on uh, covering all the variables. So if you have the correct rod, the correct reel, the correct line, the correct hooks, the correct bait, the correct, it could go on and on and on. But depending on what bite you get on, 
And you're going to be prepared to capitalize on that, that uh, situation. And we did because we were not targeting sheep's head. We were exploring and honestly trying to put fish in the boat, trying to catch fish. And the sheep's head bite was very hot that day. And I'm going to include pictures of the total catch of the group. But I'm going to show you how we prepare sheep's head when we get on the sheep's head bite. Okay, everyone. So, as I have stated, and I will state it to the very end until one day, I can say that I am, but I am not a professional. I am cleaning this sheep's head based on knowledge that I have been given from co-workers, watching videos on YouTube, researching. So, honestly, with, if anything, I take a fillet knife and I just work my way, work my way in like this. I will give a shout out to my coworker, Nick. He was the one that, so when you clean the sheep's head, you want to kind of get as much as meat uh, off the head portion. Mm -hmm. So as you can see, I kind of cut around the head this way to try to grab that extra meat here instead of coming straight. See how I was able to capitalize on the meat here? And I'm just taking my fillet knife that I sharpened. Can you hear me running a knife across the bone? And as I'm doing it, you can, you can see the fillet is coming off the fish. If someone know a better way of filleting a sheep's head, if you have uh, any tips or ideas on how to fillet a sheep's head uh, better than I'm doing, drop a comment below. Let me know. Like I said, that's the whole purpose of this channel. I wanna capitalize on catching, not just fishing. And I come here and I cut the real cage off. I start here. All right, everyone, so as you can see, here's my fillet jobs on the three sheep's head that um, I brought home to harvest this evening. As you can see, my $12.99 fillet knife actually did really well. I made sure I keep it sharp. Now, with these fillets, I'm checking out the fillets. When you catch sheep's head, I didn't notice um, at first, but I know now, but I were, I was not able to do it uh, yesterday because we was in the moment. But you can uh, bleed the sheep's head. So as soon as you catch the sheep's head, you would cut up under the gills to let it bleed out, and then you can put it in the cooler. Now, I believe that this is the bloodline, and some people cut this bloodline out here to eliminate the game taste. But honestly, my wife and I, we cannot really tell um, any difference and we leave it in to try to utilize as much meat as possible. Okay, so one of the many reasons why I truly enjoy the sport of fishing is because of, I enjoy the time on the water. I enjoy the time spending with my friends and family. I enjoy catching fish. The feeling that you get when you hook into a fish and you're fighting it, your blood is pumping, your heart is beating. You're so excited because you do not want it to get off. You do not want it to break your line. That feeling that you get when you initially hook into a fish 
it never gets old. It never gets old. And if I'm gonna tell the truth, I'm gonna tell the whole truth. So this trip that I am speaking on was from yesterday. We put the boat in, it was roughly 7.45, 8 o'clock in the morning. And we fished the entire day until about 6 p.m. almost nightfall. And I had my trip back home. I was severely beat, I was tired. So I took a hot shower and I spent time with my family. I called it at night. So first thing this morning, my coworker called me up. Hey, CJ, do you wanna go fishing? I said, heck yeah. So I was there. And this is what's so funny about fishing. And the purpose of this channel is to catch fish. He wanted to catch sheephead. He had fiddler crabs. I said, well, okay, well, I know a hot spot. And I have proof to uh, show you. We did it very well, not, not even 24 hours ago. Went to this spot, no bites. <laughs> Absolutely no bites. We fish numerous pilings. We fish numerous sea walls. Uh, no sheep's head. Now, I will tell you, we did have sheep's head bites. This is how I know we had sheep's head bites. When sheep's head bite your fiddler crab, they suck the meat out of the crab and all you have is a shell sitting on your hook. So when you get that bite, that light, and then you check your hook, and when you reel it up, it's just a, a shell just sitting there. Just a single, sorry shell just sitting there. That's why they call them convicts, because they steal your bait. And a lot of people get frustrated, because it's, it's an art to catch them. But I gave you good knowledge. Keep that rod tip down, keep your line tight, you want to keep that pressure. So when you feel that, you're gonna apply that pressure. Get a good hook set and fight them up. So, the reason why I enjoy fishing is because the feeling I have now, I wanna redeem myself. I mean, we got whooped today. We didn't catch any fish. I had an awesome day yesterday on the water. We went back to the same exact spot, nothing. And we tried numerous spots. But, heading back to the boat ramp, we asked, hey, how'd you do? Nothing. What'd you do? Nothing. Good, I thought it was just us, so now I know it's not us. Hey, how'd you do? Just a couple of small dinks, small fish. It's not worth anything. Cannot even keep it anyway because of the regulations, the size restrictions, and how many you can keep. So, today was a beautiful day, it was, 82 degrees in North Jacksonville. It was a windy, I believe we had a northeast wind, 15 miles per hour, so 15 knots, it's a difference. But it was a bad day for fishing. So it was an amazing day to be on the water, but fishing, trying to mop up and have a successful day, it was just not. But that's what makes me want to get back out there on the water. Because right now, I'm just so ready to get back out there. Because I want to redeem myself. I want to mop up again. I want to have that feeling that you get when you hook into that big one. And you fight them and you get them in the boat. Or if you're on the shore, you get them to shore and Wow, look at this creation, it's so amazing. When you pull up a fish and you see the colors and you just, it's a feeling that cannot be matched to me, so. All right guys, so I'm making a little bit of sauce. What I did was I put some olive oil at the bottom of the pan. I chopped up some garlic, onions, ginger, and some peppers in here. And once it starts to sizzle a little bit, I'm gonna put a little bit of butter in it. All right, so I'm adding a little bit of butter to it. And I'm just gonna let that melt. 
Also, I'm going to add some basil leaves. Oregano. And some black crushed pepper. Black pepper corn. dry the fish off a little bit and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put Obey on it put a little bit of adobo on, on it then a little bit of black peppercorn turn it over and do the same thing to the other side. stove preheated on medium high and I have put olive oil in it. So now let's get them on the stove top. If I add just a little more pepper, I want it to have a nice flavor. It smells good. Hold on. Yes. See that right there? Oh yeah. All right, guys, so I put, I left them up there for a couple of minutes. I'm about to pull them off. I'll let them brown on both sides really good. Oh, my gosh, guys, look at this. It smells so good. I know you can't smell it, but trust me, it does. I'm going to go ahead and finish cooking up the other ones. Right, so we're doing a quick dinner. So I picked up the Bob Evans mashed potatoes. And from Publix, I got the coleslaw, which is the bomb. So CJ's up there cleaning up because he just had a long day of fishing. So I'm about to go ahead and try some fish. Mmm, this is really good. Mmm, all right, so we'll be back. I gotta throw down on this food. So you better hurry up and come down here because the fish gonna be all gone. About me. Because I have greedy monster number one and greedy monster number two. How's the fish, guys? But look, look. It's so good, baby. You looked it up. I know I did. <laughs> like I always do. <laughs> Alright, everyone. So. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope I gave you some good tips on how to ensure you hook up with your sheep tail when you get on the bike. And until next time, let's catch my fish. <laughs>